share my screen. Oh, where is that? Okay. Uh, okay, so I guess we'll get started and also going back to let's see going back to what we talk about about the new lecturers and also we talk about okay after all the new lecturers problem is just trying to um uh formalize uh, a uh, a basically it's just a model with parameters uh, and uh, more precisely like each layer is just a uh, it's just something like that we have like um, this kind of uh, input like multiplied by okay of course this is like the um, the I should say simplest but the vanilla like little network uh, fu with fully connected layers. So that does actually appear in the homework, like um, in the homework there, you see like it's only just actually, uh, I think it's also uh, two layers like neural networks with, uh, I forgot it's two or like three, actually I probably I just only make two, um, I mean, um, two layers like that. Um, and um, I'm, yeah, anyway, I'm not sure I should say this is two layers or this is three layers, but it, it doesn't matter. So, but, um, what I mean is like you, we basically we have input multiplied by some weight and then typically go for a uh, an activation function it can be either sigmoid or like uh, a kind of uh, well layer and then like multiply by another weight and then like you get the output here so here if we are go doing a classification problem uh, this output here uh, probably go for another like uh, softmax layer that just normalize into um, uh, into probability and um, so we mentioned that okay what we're trying to train this lateral is basically we will put in some um, input here and we have some expected output here and we're trying to tune the weight here right? so given the input and output we can compute the loss function or the loss values are given the input and output and we try to mass, uh, minimize this loss uh, with respect to this weights here then we'll just do a steepest descent way uh, then in the sense that we need to find the gradient of these guys here uh, all these weights here with respect to your uh, loss there and uh, and that will be computed using uh, steepest descent and um, so we we went through that quite uh kind of uh kind of uh, i guess uh in detail like last time uh doing the gradient uh computer uh computer uh gradient with bad propagation so um and uh and once we have the gradient, it will be, uh, for example, if we, we do a uh, simplest, uh, uh, steepest descent update, will be just like this, right? We have the last weight, uh, I mean, previous weight is here. So we set the previous weight as like uh, the, just go down the gradient with this uh, kind of scale by this uh, so-called learning weight here. It's typically a small value, maybe like uh, 0 0.001 or something like that. Uh, and this is a, Kind of, uh, graphical illustration. I, I'm not sure. Like, how, I I know going full zoom. Like, it doesn't always have this animation goes pretty well. I I don't know what you see here. So it's basically like, um, this using different technique of like uh update. So the one we saw like in the previous slide is the stochastic gradient descent. Uh, it's the the simplest one. Just like we have the weight to current weight. Uh, I mean the next weight update is just the the last way uh, kind of subtracted by a scale version of the gradient and we can have introduced momentum for that we kind of briefly mentioned that but I, I don't want, won't go into detail of all this so we, we can have different variation you can see like with different variation like <coughs> you can do better like for example like 
you see this our maps pop and they add a, this add a grad and so on actually the most uh famous one actually uh, this is probably this is this illustration is a little bit old um the most popular one nowadays is the atom like typically like and you can f if you use like uh packages like for example uh this atom wow this is really doesn't write well here i'm not sure maybe it's the animation uh, so uh and uh if you use packages such as pytorch and tensorflow they will have this so what, what i want to do is like uh, okay we, we kind of um go for this i i um I I want to go for a couple examples with bad pop. Uh so let's let's start with like some very simple one, maybe just refresh your memory, maybe a little bit more difficult uh, complicated than this one. Um uh oh okay I, I changed my mind, maybe this one is in is sufficient. So the the idea of bad pop again is that we're trying to find um so we have some input here, right? If you think of um, we have the little letters so uh, any little letters you can think of is just a kind of like computational graph that we have like um, composed of computational nodes that like we have like inputs that go into each of the nodes and then node will spit out an output and then like uh, you combine with another uh, another input and then I get into another output eventually you get a final value here so let's say in this very simple example that is we have a something a function here is equal to x plus y multiplied by z here so I have the x y z is this value so I can draw this computational graph like two steps right so I can see that I have x y and z here I, I have x plus y, I first compute x plus y, I have this intermediate value, let's see if I, I have a name for that, let's call this in the va intermediate values like q here, and then, um, and then I, I, I have f here is actually equal to q multiplied by z, right? So now, I, let's say I want to find the gradient, or like the partial derivative, uh, you think of like, yeah, or the gradient, yeah, I, I use this like kind of uh, interchangeably. So, but um, what we mean by gradient is really the uh, p partial derivative of, um, or, or I should say, it's really the vector of partial derivative. Uh, and as I said, like, it depends on the, yeah, let's say vector of your final uh, kind of function with respect to all your variables, right? So here, like, puzzle x, like, puzzle, puzzle y, puzzle z. Hello? Uh, uh, please just interview me if you have any questions, because I, um, I, I can't see your face, so I, I don't have any feedback. I'm not sure, like, if, if you have any question, or, like, I'm going too fast or anything. So if I'm going too fast, you just uh, stop me or something. So... Or if I am going too slow, then you can like watch me also. So anyway, so I have this, um, yeah, so in, in the sense I want to find gradients, essentially find, finding like all these partial derivatives, right? So then I, let's see, I want to find the partial derivative of f with respect to x, y, and z, let's say. Then uh, then if I, for the bad propagation, let's say, I, uh, for this uh, particular uh, example, uh, illustrated example, I would just have like x, y, z have this value here. So then first I would go for a forward pass. So I have x plus y, this q is equal to this x plus y here. Right? So it's equal to t here. Then I have like uh, f is equal to q multiplied by z. So then I have these final values here. So what what we think of like um, for the bad pop step, if I want to find uh, the partial derivative uh, let's say uh, of let's say parcel f uh, parcel uh, f parcel x here so that will be basically equal to uh, parcel f 
parcel q times parcel q parcel x way. So and this parcel f parcel q, you can think of this guy. I assume that this maybe it's not just one step here. Maybe my many step. It will just go. Uh, it will be just pass through like from this guy here. Eh? So basically, what you see is that whenever I start from the very end here, when I go backward, the what is passing back backward like will be the partial derivative of the final function with respect to this input here. And for this, the final one here is simply in this case will be just parcel f parcel q and parcel f parcel c. And this one, I know what is this. This one, parcel f parcel q will be just uh, because f equal to q c, so parcel f parcel q is just equal to c. So therefore, I, I should just uh, pass back parcel uh, f parcel c is just equal to q times or I, or, or I can also think of like uh, parcel f parcel z is equal to parcel f parcel c times uh, this is a little bit silly but you know parcel f parcel f is equal to 1 so you can think of like this is passing for back 1 here then this one is multiplying this local derivative uh, of like the output with respect to the input so that is that uh, parcel f parcel c is 3 here so this multiplied by 3 so I have um, uh, so I have like uh, 1 multi multiplied by 3 therefore I have 3 here so similarly I have this 1 multiplied by uh, parcel f parcel q that's minus 4 here so Although parcel of f parcel q is equal to c is minus 4 here, so I have this is like parcel f parcel q, therefore it's minus 4. So th this this part is trivial, but then the next step, what you see is like, I, I, this is like passing through, I, I really hate this, I doesn't have control c here. Uh, I this I have eraser here, like somewhere. No. Uh, so. I, I have this as I said like this is basically passing through like parcel f parcel q right? so therefore for example if I need to find parcel f parcel x here it's just like this guy multiplied by this local derivative what I mean by local derivative is a parcel derivative of the output with respect to the input so this one so therefore should pass back parcel q parcel x multiplied by parcel f so Q here. Yeah. So and parcel F parcel Q is three uh, mi uh minus four eh? and parcel Q parcel X that is simply is just equal to um so Q is equal to X plus Y so that parcel Q parcel X is just one so therefore should should just pass back uh oh sorry th this parcel is minus four so it's just pass through minus four and minus four. So I, I actually like you see the scalar case is very simple. Uh, um, I'm sorry. I I I should really give this example first. Uh, uh, last time I guess. Um, before I go into detail uh, for the vector case, but uh, you see the scalar case is extremely simple. So basically, it's just basic. Uh, you have for the bad propagation step, you we are really computing the local gradient. Oh. Oh, I, I actually I, I should go like this so if you think of the entire procedure what we have is uh, we are going forward first and we're going forward we we are computing the of course the output like of each of the computation node node but at the same time we will also compute the uh, parcel the local derivative of the output uh, with respect to all the inputs for each of the computational node and we will just store that like uh, during the forward pass and then for the backward pass we'll pass back the, the gradient at the end that's we, we, we basically just pass back one assuming this is the final uh, final things we want to optimize maybe this is actually the loss here 
then you just pass by uh, parcel one, parcel uh, uh, parcel L, parcel L. That's basic one. Then multiply by by the local uh, derivative like for this guy and continue to pass back. So as you see here, so for each of these nodes, when it here we will compute the local gradient here, and in the backward pass we have the gradient passing back here and then multiply by the local gradient and we get this one here. So um, the scalar case is actually trivial. So you guys have any question? Um, uh, but uh, we we what we went through last time. This is just another example. I I, I won't go through that. This is a very simple example. Uh, we we actually went for a vertex uh, derivation last time. Uh, let me. Uh, So um, if you look at the vector example, it's, it's the same idea, but then uh, we need to be very careful. And uh, uh, actually, I, I guess um, we, we, we show that uh, it's not in this slides here, unfortunately. Let's see. Yeah, I think I should include that actually. Okay. We say that like if we have soft max at the hand, like for example, uh, if we have a latch work, um, this is very typical that when we do classification, is that like if we have uh, some layers, say like layer layers, and at the at the end, let's say we we want to do a classifier, let's say classify digits. We have ten digits here, so then we have some fully connected layer here, and, and then like. This digit, like we we want to transform into probability, then therefore we have a softmax layer here. So this is softmax. Let's say, uh, let's say call this value y here. That basically, this is the last layer. Then we have softmax. I I call this uh, p here. It become kind of probability. Then I I can use the cross entropy laws to um to basically after this one for example if i have 10 classes i i will have like classified digits let's say the input here is zero then hopefully what i get is like these 10 numbers i have this uh p zero the first number will be like pretty big maybe from 0. 0.5 and then the rest may be smaller like i have 0. 0. 0 up to 0. 0.9 i have p9 or p zero up to p9 here maybe pi p9 is a like 0. 0.01 or something like that then we say that if we compute the cross entropy for this guy, uh, the cross entropy is say like we have Q, this is the ground truth here, the Q is say like Q0 is equal to 1, and then the rest is equal to 0. And then the cross entropy is something like that um, QI, actually, I can, in this case, say, like, yeah, let, let me write in the general case, it's like just log. Uh, pi something like that sum over i is equal to one two oh sorry zero to nine say and, and if you use this cross entropy loss here then we sh we show earlier that like cross entropy loss per soft max the the gradient passing through let's say this cross entropy loss cross l where I call it l here the gradient passing back to after the soft mass layers, uh, this that basically the gradient like parcel L, parcel 
uh, y i here is actually just uh, actually I use here I use symbol o but it, it, uh, wait, should I use o here maybe So I use O here. So this is actually simply equal to, um, uh, yeah, that, that partial derivative is just equal to that. It's just equal to PI minus QI. It's very cool. So we, we all already compute that. I'm not sure that also happened in the homework, but you, you, you don't need to worry about that, but that one, that's basically the gradient passing back, uh, I uh we skip of course you can just pass back this L first where you have as we did uh earlier uh we we think of like we have couple layers here then we first have the first gradient passing back is like parcel L parcel L and then like you have this layer here uh I have this whatever uh I have P here right? I have this function like Computer loss function will be like parcel, parcel L, parcel P, and then like multiply by parcel L, parcel L. That's basically okay. Yeah, or this is just parcel L, parcel P here, and and then like this. After a word, I have this uh O here. Parcel L, parcel O is equal to parcel L, parcel P times actually this multiplication. I I I. It's not really a uh, just simple multiplication because um, uh, um, because like this is uh, actually a a vector or something, but um, let's see, yeah, m multi let's see p parcel l parcel p parcel uh, actually. Yeah, that, that's why. Parcel L, parcel P, and then parcel P, parcel O, something like that. But what I'm saying that, like, we, we can jump this step, right? We, we think of, like, this is just one way. We, we know that the output is just exactly equal to that. We can jump all the way here and skip this one. Um, so, and after we have this one, we'll... We, we we can continue to go backward, right? Continue to go backward if you have multiple layers there. Um, what uh, I guess I most interest you guys will be like this part here because I, in, in the homework, that's exactly what I want you to do is like for a linear layer, I want you to do a back propagation update like to just uh, implement that uh, particular update. So if I have like linear layers, let's say I have weight, multiply by some x here I'm up output equal to q here and, and then I like, in this case I I I, I have um, in these examples I let's say uh, uh, this will just go for a regression so I have some expected output like I have q here I'm some like desired output q tutor here and I use a second order loss that's compared l2 is equal to this but uh, this part like you may not need to worry much about it if you just worry about the homework because like, you only need to know that I have some gradient is passing back and given this gradient uh, how should I update this um, I, I mean given this parcel L parcel Q this is the for this uh, output of this uh, linear um, layer like uh, let's say the output of this linear layer is Q here given this parcel L parcel Q so how do I find like parcel L, parcel W, and parcel L, parcel X here? So um, and uh, if you if let let's go go it slowly. So in this example, like I have just let's say uh, W here is just a two by two, two by two matrix, 
and I have x is like uh, 2 by 1 so after this multiplication my q should be like 2 by 1 as well eh? so if you look at the forward uh, forward path so I have like w multiplied by x so I have q is equal to this guy here then uh, at the same time like to the, the forward path we're trying to find also the local gradient for uh, the uh, of the basically the partial derivative of the output with respect to each of the inputs so then like the partial derivative of uh, Q with respect to W this is actually a two dimension object uh, sorry like um, actually three dimensions uh, remember like one thing uh, uh, as I emphasize like a uh, couple times is like always remember that like if you are taking partial derivative of a scalar with respect to the with, with respect to some some variable then the dimension of this partial derivative should be have the same dimension of the input here so therefore I can consider the uh, partial derivative of Q with respect to W composed of two data structure here one is a partial derivative of um, Q1 with respect to W that is basically this guy here and partial derivative of Q2 with respect to W, w here is equal to this guy here and you, you can go through this math but it's pretty obvious the partial derivative of Q1 with respect to W should be just equal to X uh, uh, wait, 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 wait. yeah should be just equal to X so therefore it's, you see like 0, 2, 0, 4 when uh, for the for uh, for the first row here and it's equal to zero for the uh, second row here do, do you have any questions here like uh, okay but you guys do do I need to go more detail on this one or like it's okay like this I mean um, I, I need some feedback honestly uh, I had a question yes kind of related to the homework yes and, and what you're talking about here. Yes. So in the code, in the IPython yes. book, um, you say, make sure you can handle batches. And I yes. just wonder what you mean by batch. Yes, yes, actually, I, I will go into that once after this. But uh, let's uh, just a uh, preview okay. here. It's like, you see like my x here, I'm cutting one x at a time, right? So in actual uh, training typically people what we do is that we will consider batches so my x will be like a actually also a matrix here so like probably we'll have like x1 up to xn here something like that so then Great. Uh, that makes a lot of sense thank you yeah yes so okay uh, but uh, here like, do, do I need to explain further for this guy like you guys are fine with that like I, let me check if like yeah I, I think I'm okay I yeah, know, I yeah. know about everyone else. Yeah, let's chat. I don't want to say anything, so I assume it's okay. So similarly, uh, or like you can just go through that like it's a very simple algebra. You can convince yourself. So similarly for x also, if you look at like the partial derivative of q with respect to x, we have two terms here. Right? It's um, I shouldn't say two terms, but the structure also like kind two D because I. The partial derivative of Q1 with, with respect to X is have the same dimension of X. Then with respect to Q2 has another dimension, uh, also the same dimension of X. So then therefore I have two column vectors here. And um, also you can very easy to check that like these two column vectors is actually just equal to um, the first row of W and the second row of W. So therefore I will have the, is equal to this one here. And then like, uh, if you continue to do, then uh, I won't go into that step here, like in the sense that you uh, continue to forward and then like we backward back some, uh, let's say this is the the gradient that passing backward. Then uh, the update will be, how what should be the update? The update then should be like, uh, I have Uh, this Q here, okay, basically, this guy passing backward is parcel F, or oh, actually, sorry, this is L here, parcel L, parcel Q, right? And, and this one, if we look at this, this has two terms here, right? This 
is actually equal to parcel L parcel Q1 and parcel L parcel Q2. Right? So therefore, if I want to pass back this gradient here, if I want to find parcel L parcel W, what I, I should do is say parcel L parcel W is equal to parcel L parcel Q multiplied by parcel uh, Q parcel W. So this is the local gradient, local derivative we all we all did compute parcel Q parcel W, and and as I emphasize, I you do, it doesn't use a simple multiplication, but because you see like this is not a straightforward multiplication. You have like this uh, high dimensional structure here, but it's rather simple. So what what here? Because I already organized this parcel Q parcel W as a parcel Q1, parcel W, parcel Q2, parcel W. This one is actually equal to just parcel L, parcel Q1, parcel Q1, parcel W. Eh? So basically this is the first parcel Q and parcel W plus parcel L, parcel Q2, parcel Q2, parcel W, something like that. So, um, so therefore, if you go 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 for further step, that basically this one multiplied by this one plus this one multiplied by this one, and uh, I I don't think you see my point. I say sorry. This one multiplied by this one uh, plus this one multiplied by this one, so I get this matrix here. Similarly, I have uh, the other one is like in, got it uh, in the same manner. So now um. As Brandon's question, so we we want to make sure we can handle. Uh, let's see if I can erase something here. Uh, we want to uh, able to handle like uh, you make sure that you can handle like vector here, so. I I think in my code there. Uh, honestly, like uh, don't uh, don't get uh scared by that homework assignment. Uh, if you know what you're doing, you can finish it in five minutes. Uh, the my my solution is actually one line for each of these. So I'm I'm not sure how many of you look at the assignment there. So. Uh, maybe I explain a little bit what the assignment is trying to do. So I I have a pity. Um, oh, by the way, one one also one uh question I guess I maybe from Logan. Like, uh, if you guys have installation problem, you can use Colab. Um, for example, I I have Colab here. Uh, you, you can select GitHub. Wait, let, let's see. I need to look for the link. I forgot. I did get it working at the end of it. Oh yes, yes, I I saw that. Yeah, that that's great. Uh, um, but for some of you guys, if you 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 don't bother to really set up environment or something like that, like fast AI, um, where's the homework? Um, you can uh, just copy. Uh, okay. Uh, shoot. This is a uh, I Python notebook. Uh. I uh, let's see if I want to go to the gate. I, I don't know whether I can do it like this. Let's see. Yeah, it doesn't recognize as a um. Let's see. I do have a question about the homework though. Yes. Particularly on the adding code to compute test error rate. Where is the test data set? I see that you have a training data set, but I don't understand what the test is. So yes, it is actually is um is uh is a bit uh you uh let's see. Uh oh okay. Um here like it it doesn't matter. What what I mean is I like, um you, you basically just repeat what we are doing. <laughs> Because I, uh, uh, okay. And it's bit by folder, speed, uh,
I don't understand what that's asking us to do because at the end of this, you're already computing the error rate. Uh, yes, but that that's training error. So you see, okay, 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 okay. Uh, maybe I, I just uh, here for this one here. This is really the training error because I once I he, here I I I'm um I'm computing I'm computing the error for the current batch way. Right? So I'm using this batch to train my W one and W two. Um. And my, uh, and then I immediately compute the loss here. It, it's not fair because I I'm basically computing the error, uh, or use using the training batteries. I shouldn't say it, it's not fair, but it's like this is actually what I'm computing here is the training error. So for the testing error, I should just use the same weights that I train here. For example, like this thing, I already train is finished. Then I have this W1 and W2, it's like, okay, I'm not going to change it anymore. Now I should put in some new data here. Yeah. Um, so, I, strictly speaking, uh, because like the way that uh, this fast AI, I, I forgot how it's, it's implemented, like uh, every time you, you pull one batch here, there's a chance that your training data and testing data will mix together if I pull another batch, it may be. But I, I'm fine with you guys like just assuming this you pull one batch here, that that data will be different from the training data. So so uh, if you want to be very careful, um you can look into the fast AI and of course like, if you're interested because of you may use this for the final project, then um in the fast AI uh um interface i think like uh there's something here that i forgot like how you pull the test data instead of the training data but as i said like I'm, I'm fine with you guys if you just after you train this and you just pull another data set and just repeat the thing to to just show what is the result you get yeah as the extra bonus uh extra credit um so and uh so, uh, uh, any other questions? Um, uh, let's see. Uh, my guys. Uh, where's that? I cannot find it. <laughs> uh, Is that here? Oh, here, here, Gis or like something. How how do I pull answer? It should be gis or like, like, uh, so, um, yeah, maybe I should include this link uh, also, like in the, so, um, if you guys, as I mentioned like, earlier, if you guys uh, have problem setting it up, one thing is that you can just use, um, uh, Let's see here like I, I can just uh, open the github directory I, f I believe uh, let's see if it works uh, maybe not let's see I think I, s I did it one time it works okay right, let's try this again I, I just can't. if not I am confident like, I guess I would Give it up for the moment. Oops. Noble, noble, new noble. Oh. Hmm, that's weird. I I try one successful. Maybe like I should put an other. Link. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I see, I see the problem here. I should um. See like this notebook, maybe let's see. No the link. Uh ah, maybe like this. Let's see.
Ah,、uh, okay. I, I don't know. So,、uh, okay. <laughs> so,、uh, anyway, ah,、uh, um, you guys can try it out if it. Or like if I I find find out because I I I I'm quite sure I did it uh once that I can just open it and、uh, collab then like um we don't really need to set up anything besides running this like PIP install fast AI so um for uh so uh I I mean I、like, I guess I、like、several of you have looked into that different this thing here. Uh, for those who didn't,、uh, what we are trying to do here is I、uh, we pull out some datasets from FastAI. I just make it. I I think it's easier than download something. Then I I just、uh, if you guys install the FastAI library, you can uh, quickly uh, pull out the dataset here. It's a、uh, mini uh, tiny MNIST dataset that only have like two digits, like three and seven. So you want to recognize. Whether your digits is three or seven, so I have a very simple、uh, network here that is.、Oh, wait, actually, I have a two-layer set. What is that? Like I ever got? So yeah, so basically, you see, like、uh, it's a implementation from scratch. So,、um, but I guess I、like, that that.、Uh, in this case, it's very simple because I. Uh, I hope that also give you an idea that this is can be very simply implemented, like even without any library. So for、uh, um, for the vanilla、uh, little network, so we have this、uh, input here that I have wait here w are、uh, uh, the uh, basically the uh, uh, the uh, the variables here at、uh, the weights like w one and w two. Then I have first I have a forward layer. Okay, this is the forward pass. So the forward pass, you can see the structure of that.、Uh, you you can forget about the code here here.、Uh, this basically I just pull out that、uh, digit, then I just vectorize that, and、um, I also add one row there. So I don't we will we'll have a bias in in、uh, I mean kind of inherently implemented. So but.、Uh, As far as you are, you are concerned, basically, I just restructure the digit into an X vector, and I have Y C is basically the label here, and then like the forward pass will be like my X will multiply by the first weight matrix, right? Then it's going for a value layer, then multiply by another weight matrix, then I do solve by oh okay actually I only have uh two um two layers here, so uh and then like uh. I I compute the gradient at the end. I this one is a simple enough. I didn't really for each of the computational nodes. Each times I first compute the gradient there also. So here only when I do the feedback, I also uh, uh compute the gradient. So then I I have as you mentioned as I mentioned earlier, if I have soft max combining with um cross entropy, uh the the gradient passing back. To the input of the soft mass layer is simply the the difference of the uh the probabilities there. So therefore, I simply like this is actually the difference of the probabilities, uh, and um, and then like it have uh th then afterward have this is a a、uh, linear layer. Right? So this linear layer, this is actually the part you're supposed to implement. So this is like given the Gradient passing back, and then given the current weight,、uh, and given the current input, so、uh, I want you to get back the gradient there. And sim sim also similarly, given the current gradient, like the passing back, and the input weight, and、uh, I mean the current weight, and then the current input, I want to、uh, pass back the gradient. Uh, with respect to the input y there, so then I have a value layer. So value layer also pass back the gradient. That that one I already implemented. That、uh, you don't need to implement. And then afterward, like、um, there's、uh, another like passing back the gradient using the same function here、uh, to have d w one. So I don't need to compute d x anymore because I I don't care about that gradient. So with that gradient, I can learn right. This have that great basically gradient descent. 
then this kind of will pin out the loss here. Actually, you see like the loss is going down here, but if you want this code, the loss won't go down because like this one is like, uh, I, I have my own solution and then afterward I want it once, then you see like go down, so it doesn't go down that, that much. So, but if you look at the error weight, it's about like 90% uh, uh, on and off, like sometimes it's go higher and lower. So of course it's not great, it's like uh, a fully connected layer and it's, uh, it's not supposed to work way. Uh, but um, just uh, a simple kind of uh, illustration of the whole network. And at the same time, like for you guys, I like, want to do an exercise, just try to implement this two lines here. Basically, if you look at this, exactly these two functions here, again, this is like given the upper gradient that like passing back from the later layer, uh, and I have the input weight and the x. So here I already like give you the supposing the dimension of w here, the fan in fan out here, and also the dimension. Of, let's see, this is the batch size here. Um, as I mentioned, like because like uh, when you train and like, you give a batch, right? So it, it, in the fast AI here like the batch size is 64. So you expect a dimension is say like something like around, uh, I think it's like uh, 10, 20, uh, no, the digit size is small. I forgot what's the dimension of the digit. But anyway, um, that should be like uh, 64 columns, basically. So um, with that, like basically you should replace this line uh, to compute dw and also like replace this line to compute dx and uh, this as I said like if, if you you understand everything what you're doing like this is only one line so uh, this is actually just one line of course there's two lines of code like for this assignment here uh, at, at least like for the core part if you want to do extra credit there will be more works here but like for the core part actually it's only two lines of code so for the moment any guys have uh, any questions like so you know what you you're supposed to do, right? So let me check if like anyone put anything in chat. I don't know. Oh, where is it? Yeah. And this is so all you're asking us to do is come up with code that computes a gradient. Yes, yes. These two lines of code, and, and um, and, and compute the gradient. You need to. Do this bad pop as I mentioned here. Basically, it's like exactly this step here. So it's like when you pass back uh, here the gradient to dw here, you have this gradient. A like parcel l parcel q is is this guy. This is a parcel l parcel q one and parcel l parcel q two. You need to multiply by. So it's actually this guy multiplied by this this guy multiplied by this way. So um, so it will give you a parcel uh, L parcel W. But okay, the only thing like it's more, you need a little bit more thinking is like, because I, I, we need to update in batches. So therefore like what I'm coming in is really a, a vector here. Uh, it, it's really a matrix here. So, so say I have a two by in this case, like my batch size is B. So this thing I'm passing back is actually have a dimension like this. And also like X will have a dimension like, like this. Of course, like your dimension is not two here, like in the actual homework, but um, so it, it should be, a, but W still should be like two by two in this case. So now if you look at this here, what I have, for example, like this is like x1, x2, and so on, like up to xb here. So my w here should be, I, I have, um, uh, see, the, actually like this guy is actually x1, right? Or like this, this guy is actually x. So what I mean your w, 
should be equal to uh, xi times this would be a transpose here times this um uh, let me call this uh let me call okay let me call this guy derivative d here just call it d here and um uh, d d1 uh yeah d1i let's see xi transpose d2i Oh my cat. So it's sum of all i. So th th this is this is a scalar. This is like from this measure d one i d two i. So you, you you see my point. So um so this this is basically w, w, w yeah like so you can uh, I mean like you can take advantage of the lumpy property like this I'm writing it as a kind of loop. But actually, if you, um, of course, a better implementation is that you, you just make everything a matrix. Uh, I shouldn't say matrix, it's like a uh, tensor, like uh, all of, it's a fancy word, but it's like just a high dimensional uh, kind of um, uh, array. Then um, you can multiply them together. Um, so let, let's see if I can. Let's see which one will be easier. Like for this guy, this one is equal to uh, W1. So, but uh, okay, anyway, like maybe I should just let you guys figure this out. So it's, do, do you have any other questions like for this one? For, for the homework? Uh, you still have time because I yeah yes I I guess I, uh, may, maybe I, I I shouldn't say more about this because I spend like too much time just on, on bad pop or for this this thing, so um. Uh, okay. What what I. Maybe. I, I hear no more questions about this one. Uh Okay, I totally over spend my time. Like I didn't expect. Like I spend so much time on this. So I, I guess I a couple of things. Maybe I uh, let you guys think a little bit. So you see, like most of this stuff is not new. For example, the pet propagation, like gradient design, gradient design is obvious, right? Pet propagations. People knew that. Like okay, it, it was invented like for a long, long time, and and in the 60s, 70s, like people in control low knew this and maybe it kind of popularized like, in the 80s like something like but at least in the 80s like people were well known this is like common knowledge right so uh, my question is that uh, why why like uh new lecturers didn't get attention until like the last decade or something i mean if you think of that is this whole whole architecture is very obvious because like, if you need to train a model with lots of lots of variables of course you will put like layers you will structure them in layers like you will structure the models in layers and, and then like, what, what you're saying okay my model is simply I, I will introduce some loss here and what I want to minimize this loss and what, what I'm going to do is like, I'm going to find the gradient for each of these weights here and then I do steepest descent and, and Apparently, if I use like, um, what, like use bad propagation, I can do that. So this idea like is known like at least quite well known in the 80s, but we didn't see really deep learning until like last decade. So wh what do you guys think? I think it has to do with the uh, computation power that we had before. Um, kind of, I, I, I agree. Like, okay. I, I, yes, I guess I, uh, 
one is like computation. Uh, you are quite right. I guess the other one is also like uh, data. When your data is not enough, like you don't see the advantage. You have like so many parameters here. So only when you have so many data, suddenly it becomes really uh, useful. And that's also like, as you can see, like uh, structure, like also important. Like, um, that's why I was talk quickly. I, I guess also talk about CNN. It won't be something difficult, but we will talk about that. Uh, quickly so you can see that like in the homework assignment i have like actually i i just implemented like, two layers letter actually i i you see like for my code i did try to do a like, three layers and so on but i don't see any gains there so what i'm saying is like um uh it, it in some cases i like, uh you introduce more data or more weights here like with this fully connected layer it doesn't help uh, at least for um, for problems like that, like for uh, computation problems like that. Uh, and another reason is like uh, it doesn't fly. Uh, I mean, uh, become pop, become popular. Uh, uh, it's like uh, there's also like some tricks that people didn't realize like until pretty late, like actually very late, uh, up to within this decade like for example one thing that people didn't realize i won't go into detail because i it was uh, i didn't expect like i spent so much time here it's like for example like weight initialization for example i have like very simple lateral here 10 layers lateral like just a water deep laterals so i have 10 layers each layers have 500 new ones and then i use activation for example 10 h in the uh, 10 h is like some function like that way right? so uh, as active activation so now I, I try to train this network and uh, with some input and output. And uh, the problem is that you see, if I just give in some input here, my my weight here, if I, I look at the weight here in the middle layer, with my initialization weight here, I assume say weight. I mean, if I look at the uh, outputs from each of the new one layers, this is uh, basically reporting the histogram. So as I go into the later layers, many of these layers basically just have seals. So it means that I have no information passing through at all. So, and, uh, and okay, then what we say, okay, how about we increase the weight here then? Like maybe my weight is too small when I initialize that. Uh, let's make it bigger. So if I make it bigger, for example, I make it like instead of like zero point zero one, I make it one here. Now suddenly, like I just export like each each of the layers, I I will just get um basically the output is equal to the maximum value maximum value of ten, which is just equal to one or minus one. So um the problem is that like if you have this output is one of minus one. The gradient there, say for 10 h, if you because the 10 h has a shape like this, right? So when when you have like output is equal to one to minus one, actually the gradient there is actually equal to zero. So the local remember that when we do back pop here, the idea is that like the gradient passing back is equal to the gradient, okay, passing back to the from the out input is equal to gradient passing back to the output multiplied by the local gradient right in this case the local gradient is all equal to zero that means that there's basically no gradient passing back so therefore there's no way you can change this lateral as well so you see like in this example actually the weight how you in use initialize that is actually very important so I don't really have much time here, but uh, actually I, I probably have enough time to just talk about this one. So the, the idea is like, okay, I want to make sure, it's a very simple idea. I want to make sure that like, when I'm doing the forward pass, when after I initialize the weight, roughly speaking, I want the, um, the input energy into the layer, so. I have a layer here, the energy fitting into this layer, uh, fitting into this uh, new one, uh, should uh, should be equal to the output energy, or, or I put the other way around. The output energy should be roughly equal to the input energy. So I, I will have the energy conservation as as I pass through the layers. So I want to make sure that like I won't suddenly go, 
I mean, either I have this uh, energy explosion or like I, I basically I have output just vanish to zero. So is that clear? So idea very simple. So what we are going to do, for example, if first consider the case, uh, there's no activation function. Let's say I have shown there's no activation function. So that means that I, I'm trying to have the output variance is equal to input variance. Here we, we use the variance only. Basically, we assume the weight is still mean, right? Weight is still mean. And I, we are, I also assume that like, weight is still mean. Also, kind of assume x is still mean. So we assume that like, x is kind of like initialized to uh, just subtract the mean, let's say. So therefore, we can uh, just consider the variance. Uh, variances. So then, uh, basically, we want the variance of the output again is equal to. So the output is equal to the just a a a uh, matrix multiplication, right? Of w, w and x is equal to this guy here. I converted a summation, then it's equal to sum of variance like this. So variance I can have expand this variance as this guy here. This is an equation that you can derive. Basically, it's like variance x y is equal to this uh, kind of like fancy equation here. I won't go into that because it's it's basically just algebra. So you have you have something like this is a universal truth. So whenever you have variance, x y is always equal to uh, this guy. Wait, uh, I I want to make sure it's that universal truth or like I make any assumption here. I I think it's a universal truth uh, here. Let's see. Uh, I think so. I didn't assume that like, x, for example, x and y are zero mean. Yeah. So, but um, so um, I have that. Then I can like substitute into this. Then uh, afterward, like because like, this are zero means, right? So this two times is equal to zero. Then I only have the variance here. So you see, I did, we get something like very simple. It's like I have a variance x multiplied by variance w. And somehow some of i, it should be i equal to one to n here, uh, and then because I assume the statistics are all equal, like each of the, let's say, um, um, assuming like each of the x like coefficient have the same statistics, and also like weights have the same statistics. If we with this assumption, then we have a simple equation like that. So it means that like my weight should initialize such that the. Uh, if I want this to satisfy, right? So basically, like variance of y is just equal to variance of six. I should have this one is equal to one. So therefore, I should have variance of w is equal to uh, one over n. So if we do that, like this, this is exactly what we have here. So the uh, you see that like I I will have pretty nice. Uh, kind of like going through each of the layer, I still keep the energy roughly the same. And this is long after Safia like uh, initialization. It's introduced like, uh, about a decade ago. So you see like that's why like this very important things that like, people didn't realize. And it's actually pretty pretty simple and obvious thinking it back. People didn't realize until a decade ago basically. Um and um and uh this is like for the case I like, I, I didn't impose any activation function. So if I assume that activation is a valid, so if I use the same kind of initialization, it doesn't go too well because if you have valid, basically you cut the energy by halfway, if you think of that. Each of, t each of the time you go for a valid, like when you have the value is negative, like you, you dump all these like signals away. So you roughly speaking, like cut the energy by half. So using the same, Similar derivation, I, I won't go through that. Then you can show that like you now you should initialize the the weight variance uh instead of like uh n over two uh, sorry uh, instead of like n times the variance to be equal to one, you will have like n over two times the variance is equal to one. So therefore you should set the variance is equal to one over n uh, two over n. Um and if we do that, like this is basically also like have a value layer. You see, like each of the uh, layer will have energy is roughly equal to uh, uh, roughly conserved basically. So um, 
and this okay this part I go really quickly I guess it's kind of okay so um, um, so I guess I actually I suddenly go really went really fast and I, I suddenly have five minutes left um, you guys have any questions I I, I probably talk about CNN next time so uh, um, and um, so uh, um, I, I don't know if I, I uh, if you don't have any question so okay I, I think I shouldn't start anything new like uh, in, I even though I have like four actually I only have four minutes now so um you guys have uh, any questions I express about the homework so if not yes um, I do have a question about the homework yes so what I take away from today is that we only need to change those two lines that you said yes Uh, yes, if, if you don't concern about the extra quarter, it's just two lines, these two lines here. Okay, thank you. And, and actually, it's really just two lines if you do it very efficiently. So what I mean, like, they're like, um, okay, one, one thing, like, it may help you, help you guys is, like, uh, um, that's, that's something, like, in Lumpy is very useful. Uh, is that like called broadcasting? I, I'm not sure like you guys uh, knows that. Um, so, for example, if I have uh, a a uh, I need some space here. Maybe I can use space here. So, for example, if I have a vector like uh, x1, x2, and I have like uh, vector y1, y2, I have a row vector. A column factor. If I want to compute, uh, of course, I this one I, I know how to compute. Maybe I, uh, or maybe I, I, I do like this. I, I have a C1, C2 also. So, like, vector in three dimensions, like you can think of x1. Uh, this one is actually in the dimension 2, 1, 1, and this dimension is 1, 2, 1, and this dimension is 1, 1, 2. So what I want to compute is, let's say I want to compute a, a two-dimensional cube. So where like the elements here say multiple x1, x, uh, x1, y1, z1. And let's say this second one is say x1, uh, x2, y1, z1, something like that. Like you see my point here. So the broadcasting, as long as you, you make sure that like, X, x1 x2 have a dimension like this uh, okay uh, x1 x2 have dimension 211 and this one have dimension 121 this one has dimension 112 you can simply mu multiply them together so I mean this is equal to x or I should say x has dimension 211 and this y has dimension 12 actually I don't need to erase that y is equal to y1 y2 have dimension 121 and this C has dimension one one two is like this. Then basically x times c uh, times y times c automatically get me this cube thing here. Is I like have dimension two two two. Uh, and this is actually uh, uh, very commonly used. It's not just in LumPy in PyTorch. Uh, or, or, or have this kind of like broadcasting um, feature and it's actually very convenient um, and uh, okay I, I guess I really have any other questions I, I, I will check if like you guys have any other questions Daniel, so uh, you 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 uh, let's see. That's a couple. Okay, I'm not sure what that yes mean. Uh, honestly, so um, so but already like it's like uh, more than ten minutes ago. So I guess it's okay. Um, 
so uh, I guess if you guys don't have any questions, we'll just stop here. So, uh, uh, or you can ask me, like, or either post on like uh, Piazza or like uh, you can ask me like in next uh, next class like uh, on Thursday. So uh, okay, I'm I'm stopping it this now. Then let's see where should I. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Let's see.